let's record this. You never know if it's going to be worth it. Um, so I can choose to have my numbering inside my text as one, two, three, four. I can say restart numbering on every page or every chapter, uh, stuff like that. For now, I'm going to leave it all default. Then the formatting is, is two ways. So one is the footnote reference number in the text, which is the small little one, two, three, that is, gives the marker where the footnote actually is placed. And then in the bottom is the footnote formatting. So um, in this case, I can um, set already a character style. I could say, well, I'm gonna give this a reference and the footnote formatting as my paragraph styles, I can choose footnotes. And then it uses a separator, which is, let's say, between the number and the note. And by default, this is set to top. And so you can choose that here on the side and this little um, uh, triangle and the T is, let's say, the grab unifier for the top symbol. Okay, and then in layout, I can say if footnotes can span across columns, switch to pages, and you can also specify, for instance, the, the, the distance between, um, how much space between the footnote and the, uh, and the start of the footnotes and the, and the body text. So I can also set this to two, and it will just take out maybe one line or if I need more space, I can just add uh, more. <coughs> and uh, usually when you set this on, usually it has this rule above on like a very classical kind of like papers and academic papers. They usually have this uh, like a, a small kind of line in between, which I hate. So I turn this off. Okay. So now automatically, um, this one is, is all set. And uh, because I actually, sometimes it does it automatically, but here my footnote is still set into body text. So sometimes you have to kind of just um, independently just create and set these two footnotes. One click, okay. And one thing I already changed this, this morning when I showed this example is um, originally, if you think of the, the previous um, examples that I made, I used this footnote style as a, in a box on the side, you know, that, that showed the text object style with a separate baseline grid that was smaller. Um, and in, in that um, setting, I had aligned these to all lines. And that's what you get because then inside this footnote, it would still follow the original uh, baseline grid. So what I did is that I made a separate style sheet if I want to use with smaller type on the side and changed the settings of my footnote uh, paragraph style sheet to none. So it will just take whatever I specify in the basic character format, which was already set by six and eight. Eight was a number that we came, which was dividable from the 12 of our standard baseline grid, which means it will stack up footnotes wherever it needs to, where they come in place. So if my end of my text box is correctly set to my margins in this case, it will start on a baseline grid and then go off and change, but still they will remain kind of come back every third. You see here it comes back or here one, two, three. So we are still having the same typographic stru structure here. Another thing that would make it more nicer to, 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 to organize this content is, is by adding a couple of tricks that we can use uh, in this find and replace that I showed you the last time. 
So if I would go to my find and change options, um, for me, I use command F for this. Um, what I can do is that I'm gonna find these intros here because I see that there is a top and the space in front of it. And I wanna have all these spaces out of there. So I'm gonna say here under this little uh, uh, add sign, I'm gonna select the top and then <coughs> give it one space. And I'm going to change that into only a top but I'm now also going to add something else, which is a very interesting and important feature. And you can find it under other, and it's called an indent to here. I will show you what it does. Um, and I'm also going to say, well, uh, find this in the format footnote. So in footnote, Find everywhere the combination of a top and a space, replace it to a top with a indent to here, and change them all. Boop, done. And now I have beautifully sorted lists. You see? And so what the, 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 the trick is and what's so nice about this indent to here is that it, it works for a lot of uh, different things and you can also find it on the type, insert special character, other, and then in, indent to here. Is for instance, if I would make a summary uh, in this section here, I could say this is uh, part A, then give it a top. And if I use indent to here, which in my case, the shortcut is command backslash or the straight line, just left to your um, uh, enter, I can place it in and then it automatically, wherever you put that thing in, it aligns the whole shebang to it until an end of a paragraph. So if I want to make a se second one, um, if I give it a hard return, it will jump back to the original start. I can say, oh, B, top, indent to here. But since this indent to here is flexible, I could still say, instead of a top, I can say a space, or space, 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 space. So it follows that marker. And how you can see this is like in the invisibles, is this small cross, this dagger they call. So every space before that, it will just take that position to align that text. All the way up to a hard return. So it's a very easy, uh, convenient thing that you sometimes have little columns or rows and you want to align stuff and then you're thinking, oh, you know what, I'm gonna just put A and B in a separate little text box and then yeah, you understand. So this actually organizes the stuff really easy and you can really uh, uh, align things really nice and properly, yeah? So even so with this, this gesture of using uh, find and replace combined with uh, uh, this indent to here, in a couple of minutes, you can just kind of have everything uh, nicely organized. So, in this case, since that is a paragraph style, I already gave it uh, uh, specific, you know, you, you can say, well, I'm gonna um, give it um, different types of indents or uh, maybe I'm gonna give it right indent that's, so you almost create like a frame in a frame. So it can really specify how I want these footnotes to appear in the bottom of, uh, of my page so that they are maybe slightly more elegant. They give a kind of a nice white space around it. And once I, even if I would just continue to let this uh, content uh, uh, 
continue to flow here. It takes all of this and brings it into one nice type of organizing it. Was that a bit, does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah? Um, here, inside your paragraph options, spacing. So you just give it a right alignment. There are so many things that how you can um, control, let's say, the look and feel. I can even say span columns and then uh, um, split columns. Does it do that? Ah, no, it doesn't do that probably on a... Ah, strange. No, not in this case. But there's a, there's a lot of ways that you can even uh, uh, organize. So sometimes I find it also almost like a trick to almost make a whole text box out of your whole page and then do all the spacing and styling only through the paragraph styles. Because yeah, you can, yeah, if I, if I open up my grid, um, I could potentially zoom in and then select this and uh, say, oh, you know what? If I follow my own grid, I could say the, um, I'm gonna put this at uh, 25 and then the tops, I can also say um, maybe here or no. Nope. So I kind of messed something up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I can even tweak it in such a way that it still follows the guidelines of the grid of the page if I want to kind of uh, separate this all. Um, what else did I show this morning? What else? Um, yeah, this was, I think, basically it. Uh, yeah, we went over some questions that people had regarding the InDesign book files, whether it would be possible to export it all directly. What I, um, I don't know if there's any specific questions here in the class uh, about um, InDesign book files. But as an example, I, um, I showed this text where this comes from is, uh, a book about riots I'm currently working on. And um, so the whole book is actually here, you can see it. It's like uh, how many? 38 InDesign files all lined up together. And so I can open that in the book. And then if I make an export directly from from that book by selecting all of them. Um, I just create, let's say, a, uh, a PDF version of the book where all these documents are just kind of chained up in one big string.
And so it's really easy to organize the, the, the content or if they wanted to change um, any order of the book, I can just drag and drop these InDesign files in whatever order I want and then make a new export and say, well, compare, let's check, maybe this is better. So you can uh, have a very quick fix on this. Um, But no InDesign, other InDesign things that you kind of like tried out and struggled? I have problems with the chapter or the title and then the title isn't in the chapter. That's the problem. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's very no, it's not it's not even interesting. <laughs> interesting is like a way of saying that was a waste of time. There was a pain in there. Right. Yeah, it like basically if I would be in the situation, I would say fuck you. Either you provide me with proper content or I will charge 65 euros an hour to get these end of line breaks out of there. But there is no, no, actually you cannot use this, to be honest, because it's just one big mess. Uh, you could, for instance, with find and replace, take all the line breaks out, but you would just end up destroying the content because you don't know which ones you could take out and which you can't. So um, next time I see Jeremy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It was only we had to read it and also read it. It actually was like a machine. I also used this once, uh, but it was in another context last year. I did a project, a book project with the third years to remake uh, the classic book of Finnegan's Wake by James Joyce. The strange thing about that book, it's the only book that has been published a lot of times. It's from 1939, I think. Mm. But it was always published in exactly the same order. Which means that in every edition of Finnegan's Wake that you find, every line break is exactly the same. So every line, the last word of every line in this book of 628 pages is always the same. Each book has 36 lines. And why is this? There has been written so many books about this book. There's even, I think in the University of Antwerp, there's one uh, cultural department completely devoted only to the work of James Joyce, is that there are so many books that refer to things in that book that they, in all their papers and research, they can point out page 374, line six, sixth word. And if you would make a new edition and you would just change the layout a bit and then the text flows slightly different, you would never be able to find any relationship to the, the, the academic research about that book anymore. And I, I was stunned about this because I never heard of a book that had been reprinted so many times, but the text was never changed. It's really interesting. Um, and there's like really crazy fanatics. Um, and Joyce, it took him 17 years to write this book. And in this book, he writes, um, the whole story is about one night. It's a book about dreams and he wrote it in a dream language. 
So there's like 60 languages incorporated in there, 300 rivers. Um, I think there are parts of the Bible, the Odyssey, the Quran, the Book of the Dead in there. So it's the very first, what they call nowadays hypertext. It was actually the internet before the internet because there are so many references in that book, it's crazy. It's almost like a conspiracy theory masterwork. There's all kinds of way he made up a lot of words. And then there's also words that start with H C E in that combination. And that refers to the male main character. So every time there's a sentence that starts with an H, you already see that the second word starts with a C and then the third word starts with an E. There's all of these kind of really quirky inside things are in there. But yeah, to make a long story short, um, PDFs are really a nightmare for any form of content because yeah, they break the, the flow of the, the text. Um, but your other question, is actually very simple just to kind of just briefly uh, look at this one more time is that um, when we look at those ty type variables so in this case I have this one I'm going to delete it in the text variables I can define it and I can make a new one so chapter new version so I've chosen and in this case again I'm using a paragraph style based running header so it connects to a paragraph style I'm going to use the first on the page um, I'm not using any text is text before or text after you can like by default add stuff that automatically appears in front or at the end uh, and I'm going to change the case into uppercase. And then I can simply either say I'm done or I can say insert. So this chapter new version is now in here. And if I'm going to uh, edit this. So this links, so you get all your paragraph styles here. So in this case, if I want to connect this to the chapter or in this case, I'm gonna set this to title. So that if I have a first title that has rights as contestations of neoliberal urbanism, it automatically inserts that <clears throat> here in the top. If I would take this title out, because there's already another title there, <clears throat> it's gone. But then on the second page, neoliberal urbanism and its contentation, <clears throat> chapter two, yeah? Uh, if, if I if I make a book mm. depend on what I want <clears throat> This is this is way easier. That that's take. So I, I could also say, well, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a budget uh, question. If they're really nice to me, I would like to maybe make it more prettier. But, so, but sometimes, sometimes I also ask myself, well, what is the purpose? Oh, it's it's a very kind of formal textbook for people. Uh, to read and to just have direct access to these footnotes. 
would it really matter for me to make it like really cool and nice and different? <coughs> Could be. And sometimes you could also say, well, maybe this is not the book to do it. But I, I yeah, I love to experiment with this. And I think that also, uh, for instance, in the, in the Metropolis M in the magazine, we often also use them um, uh, tilted between the gutter of the, the columns. So like we have two columns and then we put the footnotes like in between, which is nice. It, it, yeah. But this is, this is actually a, um, a more, just more simpler uh, solution. But in, in some of these uh, textbooks, te textbooks, you sometimes also wonder or ar could argue, um, is it important to really find a unique solution for something that needs to be very usable for them? Oh, I just need to find this reference. Oh, where is it? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, no, because basically I can, I can do the whole layout of a book in one text box. Because as soon as you start to move stuff around, it becomes a nightmare. So the more you can automate and say, oh, I'm gonna, uh, do, like little simple things like making this shift of, of, of this indent structure, just giving it an indent instead of putting it in a separate box and then moving it slightly to the right, is for me way conv more convenient and, and, and consistent because if I want to change it later on, it does it everywhere in the book. But that's, yeah, that's what, one of the, 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 the things is that, and that's something you also already saw and you will find out is that there are so many different ways of using the softwares and also to, to use it also sometimes in ways where it's actually not used for. That's also the interesting part. And there's, yeah, you know, of course you can just make text boxes for everything. Um, but I see it also that, that the more you can be more secure about how you work with it and that you have control over that, the better it is, especially when it comes to um, if you have to work together or if you, for instance, would end up and you would like to work inside another studio where you have to work in a team that, oh man, I'm, I have to go in quarantine again. Can you pick that up? And then they open up your file and they're like, <laughs> where to start? Because it's a mess. And I can speak from this, from a, a, a lot of experience that if, if interns or assistants in the studio um, don't prepare this well, and I have to kind of do pick stuff up last minute because something needs to be changed. And I'm like in this document, like, eh, how did, how did he or she make this? I get, <laughs> I get super annoyed. Because you have to then figure out how to, to access something, but not run into the risk that you move one thing, which leads that other things will collapse on the next page or the next slide, it's stuff like that. So this is, it's, it's more of a safe and a more secure way to, 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 to make sure that everything works more consistent. And taking this into account, I think that also, um, where I'm going next, uh, this applies even more. So you have, um, you need to be even more consistent uh, when it comes to working with typography in web-based or screen-based media, yeah? So 
don't uh, don't hesitate. If you do have questions or things that that come up, just let me know. Um, then next, I'm gonna uh, continue to go to XD, um, and I will write you all because <clears throat> at, at work, I'm just going to do these couple of works to do these simple very hands-on pragmatic extra tips and tricks for InDesign and other programs. I'm not giving any other assignment than to pay attention, but I need to assess something somewhere. So the only thing I really want you guys to kind of do in whatever time you want and when you want to do it is to make sure that you really build this proper default InDesign file for me. Yeah? So a baseline grid with object styles, paragraph styles, and character styles, as much as you know that whatever book might have uh, titles, subtitles, body text, body text with indent, all nicely chained up. That's what I, uh, actually, that's the only thing I ask of you to make sure that you have like something proper to work with that if you need to work on something new, you can always pop that open, just change the typeface in the paragraph style, the first one, and then you are off to make new stuff. So, um, 